Well, recently, I came across a picture that was taken of me on high school graduation day. And I tried to find it again so I could bring it, but I don't know where I was looking. I, I looked at my old computer, it's not there, so really strange. But when I saw that picture, um, I immediately reconnected with who I was back then and what I felt. And I didn't think of myself as arrogant at the time, but the thought chip on horse shoulder immediately came about, chip on my shoulder. And I had this kind of smirk on my face that was like, I am so happy to be out of here. <laughs> so in addition to feeling a lot of compassion for that person, I also thought, gee, that attitude still seems pretty familiar. And I better check in my own mind, how much is this sense of poor me still influencing me? So I think most people probably felt some kind of um, trouble fitting in in high school. Um, maybe with peers or just like, what am I gonna do with my life after I graduate? And I remember feeling very disconnected. Um, like the world wasn't living up to my standards. People were not as kind or intelligent or as flattering as I thought they should be. And the world I was learning about in history class also didn't make any sense. Um, the wars and the colonialism, the domination and the slavery. And then my prospects after high school seemed like entering a world of materialism and competition and greed and not so much emphasis on things I was interested in, like how to alleviate suffering and how to unlock the true potential of the mind. So some of these grievances actually still seem quite reasonable to me. But uh, my response at the time had been very unhelpful. And it was basically anger and despair over the powerless that I felt to um, make the changes in the world that I want to see. And so in NVC language, the world was not meeting my needs for kindness, belonging, and security. But I misidentified the culprit. At the time, I didn't know anything about the Buddhist worldview or how the root of suffering and happiness lies within our own mind. I kept looking for someone to blame my misery on and the misery of others as well whether that be corrupt governments, greedy corporations, or powerful elites who are trying to advance themselves on everybody else's expense. And I also blame myself for feeling insecure and unhappy. So I still find myself thinking this way um, from time to time, but at least now I'm able to see that this view of suffering doesn't really capture the full picture. So the Buddha taught that the primary reason that each one of us suffers is because of the harm that we've inflicted on others in the past. And we also suffer because of our ignorance and self-centered way of viewing the world. Our minds are continually, our self-centered mind is continually dissatisfied and always wanting more and better. And it's also always afraid that someone's gonna come along and take what's mine. And of course, this view creates a lot of misery and I can see now how so much of the suffering I experienced while growing up is actually due to this self-centered attitude. So looking back, I wish I had focused more on how I could contribute to making my high school a happier and healthier environment. I thought identifying with my anger at the time would make me feel more powerful and secure, but instead it zapped all my energy to contribute in a positive way. I wish I could have thought more about others and had compassion for them, instead of competing with them or looking down on them or just ignoring them. And the popular people I actually think needed the most compassion because they were the one who, ones who were most enslaved to the eight worldly concerns. I wish I hadn't been so quick to give up on adults and the world either. I could have saved a lot of time and energy rebelling against the system when I went into college. But the thing I wanna work on the most, and this is something I recognize still causes me problems, is the sense I have of entitlement to having happy, positive experiences where people are always kind and generous with me. And the fact that this did not happen in high school seemed like a big injustice that I had every right to be angry about. I thought society owed me everything good and that I shouldn't have to put, more, put forth much effort to get it. I don't judge myself since that's actually what American culture presents to us. But this is not reality, and it completely ignores the responsibility that each one of us has to secure our own 
happiness and to avoid suffering. So now when people do things I don't like or <laughs> they don't follow through on an agreement that we had, I, I try to remember, first of all, this is samsara. People have afflictions and their minds are under the control of polluted karma. Many people don't practice mind trading and some don't even have any kind of ethical framework or guidepost within their life. So what can I really expect? Second, I think it's really not kind to expect people to give more than they are capable of giving. And it's not kind to judge people who don't live up to my standards of who I think they should be. And then thirdly, withdrawing from those I disagree with only contributes to the lack of love and connection that I want to overcome. And those are the strategies that I had um, really failed to understand and to apply while I was growing up. So now when you know, I don't get treated the way I want to, um, I want to remember that my anger is coming at least in part from this sense of entitlement. And that entitlement is not a kind or a realistic attitude. And I think this insight could be helpful for me in many areas from interpersonal relationships to what I expect from the government and what I expect from broader society. So as John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your government can do for you, but, you could, but what you can do for your government. So I'd like to ask myself more, not what can other sentient, sentient beings do for me, but what can I do for sentient beings? And then I can be the change that I wish to see in the world and the light and the darkness that I found so hard to endure. And if I ever have to go to high school again, hopefully <laughs> I'll be more sympathetic and connected to my fellow peers. <laughs>